Thank you, Al and team. Well, with the success of Black Panther, the movie, I'm sure everybody has seen it. A lot of people that I know have seen it twice. Um, there is increased focus now on the field of STEM and how that relates um, to African Americans, especially African American women uh, and girls. And so I had to call in a professional. She is a consultant and a manager of technology. Her name is Jill Parham, and she is going to, to share with us the excitement around STEM and why it is so impactful, um, you know, after seeing the Black Panther movie and why we should now start to, to really focus on uh, getting our African American girls and women in STEM. Welcome to the show, Jill. Thank you, Nikki. And I am so excited about um, Shuri, the character in Black Panther, who was the IT um, head uh, in, the, um, in the movie. I mean, you know, she exemplifies the many talented and intelligent technical African and well American women that are breaking the ceiling barriers and the various uh, technological industries today. So it was exciting to see her on film and on the big screen. Not only is she young and cool and stylish, <laughs> but she's relatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, she, she goes to work in her tennis shoes. She has the cool jewelry. I mean, her language that she uses is very re relatable to the young women. And listen, she challenge she challenges and exemplifies the challenge that many of our African women do in um, challenging our traditional social etiquette. Um, do you think that the negative stereotype that some people may have about um, scientists and engineers and mathematicians um, is one of the reasons that more African American girls don't go into to fields to STEM fields? Absolutely. I mean, they don't see themselves there. Um, you know, you have, you know, professors and you have your colleagues um, in those areas that do not look like you. So it's kind of hard to communicate uh, in that setting as well as feel comfortable in that setting. So I think it has had a big impact. And believe it or not, we have more and more African American young women. Um, uh, uh, you know, participating in the STEM field. And it's good to see them or this character on uh, the big screen because there's many more of us out there that don't look like the traditional look of STEM. So tell me a little bit about, about you and your journey. I mean, what, what you know, prompted you to get into um, the technology field? Well, I've always had a strong... Um, you know, natural uh, propensity for math and science. You know, I graduated from the University of Cincinnati with a major in computer sciences, a minor in communication arts. Um, I went on and I uh, received my master's of business administration from Baldwin Wallace College in Berea, Ohio. So I've always had a strong propensity uh, to math and to science. I love uh, that field. I love um, problem solving, but I must say, you know, um, re re regarding the movie, uh, there are some obvious um, skill sets that Zuri has, and that is, um, you know, the technology, technology uh, skills that she has. But to make it in this profession, um, there are other transferable skills that, um, that are required by anyone. And so it was good to see that, and, and this may not have been obvious to everyone, but it was good to see that Shuri, she possessed not only good technology skills, she possessed good analytical skills, mm -hmm. she worked well alone, she worked well in a group, um, she um, had to have, um, you know, project management skills, and most, and, and, and most important, she had to be ready to provide not only one option, but many options to uh, T'Challa when he uh, was going off on his missions. If you notice, she had two 2.0 versions of the uh, <laughs> Black Panthers available right. to T'Challa <laughs> when he needed right. it. And she had the, the um, that um, uh, simulated car ready. She had all yeah. of the different um, 
uh, communication uh, tools ready for him. So, you know, it, it was just an example to all African-American women, you have to be ready for the opportunity when it knocks. So I was really impressed with that. Really, and so, and, and I guess you've said a lot, but my final question is, as we kind of wrap this up is, what advice would you give to, to young girls who are just now starting to make decisions about what they want to do um, as a career? I would advise them to always follow their passion, not to get distracted about, you know, who's around them and what they may say, um, to uh, just be inspired by other uh, women and men who are, um, who are following their passion. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of sacrifice, but it's um, a lot of reward. Uh, when you actually do those things in which you love doing. Too many of us are in uh, positions where we're working in the field because we don't like it. Right. If you are a good mathematician, if you're a good scientist, follow your hearts and dreams. You know, the world is changing. It's becoming more diverse. And there's many of us that look just like you out there. So uh, follow your heart and your dreams. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Jill. You can connect with Jill on LinkedIn uh, using Jill C. Parham. You, if you Google her, you'll find her. I found you easily, and I'm excited to connect more with you. But I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today, and, and hopefully we will you know, hear so much more about our girls going into the STEM field. So, Al, back to you.